Now, my next guest coming on is a business person, and we're going to be talking about seeing the big picture with with him, so that we can uh, get an idea of what it takes to what it takes to get uh, the big picture in business and build up the business acumen that we need for our credibility, our careers, and our companies. You want to keep the number on hand, our 289-1520 telephone number. A little bit later in this hour, we will be giving away four tickets to the Home and Garden Show happening this weekend at the uh, Victoria Seaside Park, and those will be going away just a little bit later in the show, in this hour, as a matter of fact. And you'll want to visit my website, which is brainstormingonline.com. That's That's where I keep the archives of all of the past interviews that I do. Plus, I have my daily poll up there, and the poll up there is the same one that the question that I asked on Monday. Is President Barack Obama responsible for the high gas prices? You can go online and cast your vote. It's a simple yes or no multiple choice question. And as soon as you cast your vote, you can see the results right there online so you know how other people are voting. I will announce the overall results of the poll Monday on Monday's show. My next guest... Uh, have you ever wondered the, the, the secrets of business? Well, my next guest has discovered the five proven, proven drivers that lead to business success. He's encapsulated this knowledge into a book, Seeing the, the Big Picture. We're going to talk to him about getting the secret sauce of business success for entrepreneurs, business leaders, or employees looking to get ahead in their organization. Kevin Cope is a successful business executive. He is also a trusted resource and confidant for top business leaders from around the world. Kevin has spent a decade helping Franklin Covey define the role of a leader in the 21st century after mastering his business acumen at the Covey Leadership Institute. Kevin partnered with Stephen M. R. Covey to start Acumen Learning in 2002, specialized training company that has introduced their five business drivers models to 16 of the Fortune 50 companies. Smart, insightful, straightforward, engaging are just some of the words that are used to describe Kevin as a guest. Welcome to the show, Kevin. How are you doing today? I'm, do, I'm doing well. Thanks for having me. Well, thank you so much for being on the show, and thank you for being a thought leader and really boiling down business into just the five principles that we need to know in your book, Seeing the Big Picture. So let's get right into it, because I find it interesting. Your research indicates that the majority of employees and many entrepreneurs fail to understand biz- basic business metrics. Why is that a dangerous thing? Well, you know, I think a couple of things are at play with that. And, and by the way, uh, we were quite surprised to find out how big the gap was. When we started the company, we thought most everybody knew it. Maybe frontline supervisors didn't. But So the gap is big, and therefore, you know, the, the book. Um, and I think there's a couple of reasons why this is a real challenge, especially now in this tough business environment. One is that companies need employees making really brilliant, really good business decisions. And if people aren't clear on the big picture of their company or how their company makes money, they're probably not going to make as good of decisions. Okay. And and here's the second reason. Employees, especially now, if you look at the Gen Y, Gen Xers, the millennials, they really strive or really look for companies where they can be engaged. They really want that line of sight. And so a second reason is you'll have more engaged employees if they see that big picture. Well, and and in theory, that sounds very, very good, Kevin. But, I mean, the reality is with all of the layoffs and the cutbacks that companies have been seeing over the past three years, the people that are there may or may not have the training, certainly may not have the background or understanding of what constitutes a good business decision. Right. You know, you're exactly right. In the last three or four years, there's been, you know, somewhat of a real violation uh, (laughs) around, uh, you know, that idea of balancing profit and people. And as a matter of fact, if you, if you read the, the news article this morning about Goldman Sachs and the individual leaving and writing, a, you know, kind of a scathing letter about Golden, Goldman Sachs, yes. you know, another example of a real profit focus and not a recognition of balancing profit and people. But there are some companies that do it well. Well, it's interesting you would bring up the Goldman Sachs. Now, he was a disgruntled employee. He was leaving the company anyway, taking some parting shots at his at his old company. Do you place a lot of credit or credibility in that op-ed that appeared in the New York Times? Uh, you know, it's interesting. Um, there are a couple of things that get my attention. Uh, one is I think there's been some whispering of that, um, you know, for the past few years. Um, whispering, you know, amongst, uh, you know, kind of Wall Street uh, types. And the second is um, the rebuttal wasn't as strong as I would have loved to have seen it from Goldman Sachs. Now I'm sure there will be more group 
regrouping and some other employees will come out. So I don't give it 100% attention, but it's certainly, you know, you, you take notice of it. Well, Lloyd Blankfein's rebuttal, Lloyd Blankfein is the CEO of Goldman Sachs. His rebuttal is probably as strong as you could word it in today's environment where you've got to be politically correct and so forth and so on. I don't put a lot of stock in that as well. But let's come back to your book, Seeing the Big Picture, because what I liked about it, this is great for anybody at any stage of their business career, whether you're just starting out or whether you're an old hand and you just need some refreshers. And you boil down the five key drivers in a business to these. Cash makes a lot of sense. You want to be sure about cash. Profit, assets, growth, and people. I want to dive into each of these, if we can, Kevin, in just a little bit more detail. What do employees and entrepreneurs really need to know about generating cash and using it to spur growth in a business? Well, let's talk first about an entrepreneur. Um, You know, only one-third of businesses make it uh, four or five years. So two-thirds don't. The number one reason a company will fail if it does is it underestimates its cash needs. So if I'm, I'm an entrepreneur or starting a business, I've got to be really keen on understanding my cash position as well as my ability to generate cash. Okay. And uh, so you bring up cash position. There are actually three terms that I'd like you to help clarify, if you would. There is the position, cash position. That's that's an important term. But then you talk about cash flow, which is generating cash, and liquidity. What's the difference between a cash position, cash flow, and liquidity? Well, cash position basically is how much access do I have to cash? Well, I shouldn't say access. How much cash do I have now? whether it be in the bank, uh, maybe it's CDs. So fairly liquid assets, uh, that would be my cash position. Cash flow is how much additional cash do I generate from my core business in a period of time, whether it be a month, a quarter, or a year. That's cash flow. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, most people would suggest cash flow is probably even more important than how much cash you have now. I would agree. Yeah. Then the third, liquidity, would refer to not only the ability to get cash, but whether what other somewhat liquid assets do I have, whether it be inventory, uh, you know, maybe credit lines, that would also suggest, in addition to the cash I have right now, what other sources could I get my hands on fairly easily? Okay, I get it. Now, um, so cash position, cash flow, and liquidity, those are the elements of cash. And you rank that as number one, even more so than profit. Why is cash more important than profit? Well, you know what's interesting? I, as you look at those five drivers, um, cash is mentioned first, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's the most important. Oh, okay. Part of, yeah, part of it is it, seeing the big picture is understanding how these five really interact together. They're very interdependent in nature. For example, if you've got a real strong focus on cash and uh, really building up a strong cash position, you'd probably uh, foregrow go growth. Uh, or you might even pay less attention to customers. And so they're very interdependent in nature. Now, cash is listed first because as you're starting a company or you're getting going, it's the number one reason you would fail. And potentially what you've got to pay attention first before you get out of the gates, uh, having enough cash to even start a business, right. to buy inventory, hire people, etc. All right, all right. So then profit comes next, and maybe not in that order sequentially, but certainly profit is important. Profit is the mother's milk of all businesses. And, and the thing that I've been most amazed about in this last reporting period on Wall Street, the amazing resilience of the American economy to generate profits among the 500 largest companies in this country. So the two drivers of profit are increasing revenue, or cutting costs. And in this recent recession, we've seen a lot of business that relied heavily on cutting costs, laying off staff, cutting back services, maybe closing branches, closing uh, offices, that kind of stuff. In what ways is it possible to really rely too heavily, though, on cutting costs to try to grow your profit? Well, here's what, you know, it's a real mixed message when a company improves their profit simply by cutting costs. The the challenge is it's not long-term and sustainable. Um, if you want to have long-term sustainable profits, you've got to grow revenue and you know, manage your costs effectively. So the challenge is if you're just cutting costs, that's not a long-term solution. A uh, second challenge is it's not very attractive to employees. One, because <laughs> it, you might have been laid off. And two, those that are remaining uh, in working in a cost-cutting environment, it doesn't engender kind of the creativity and the innovation and the excitement you would see in an organization that's also growing the business. And what sort of impact does that have not only on the employees but on the customers as well? Well, you could see some organizations, you know, certainly Toyota a couple of years back really, uh, you know, became forefront in the news because they were so focused on growing profits that uh, they started to experience some quality issues. And I, and I know there's still some data coming out on that. But certainly um, 
their strong focus on profits to a degree hurt that middle business driver, which is people, and that for me is employees and customers. So in their case, uh, too much emphasis on profit negatively impacted the customer. All right. My guest is Kevin Cope, author of the book, Seeing the Big Picture, Business Acumen to Build Your Credibility, Your Career, and Your Company. And uh, we're talking about the five drivers of businesses that he sees. Now, I find it interesting that uh, the banks just had to go through the stress test and try to pass the stress test. Only four banks failed that. Uh, As you look at that failure, was it because they didn't have enough cash, didn't have enough profits, if we were to have a major financial meltdown? Well, you know, certainly uh, the source of cash over time is a company that, uh, an organization that's able to generate profits. And so for those organizations, they certainly will either need to generate more profits to get a stronger cash or capital position, or they might need to look at uh, selling some of their assets in order to generate more ready cash. My special guest is Kevin Cope, author of the book, Seeing the Big Picture. And you want to keep our number handy. It's 289-1520. We're going to be giving away four tickets to the Ventura County Spring Home and Garden and RV show a little bit later this weekend. That is a $20 value. We'll be giving those away within this hour. Now, Kevin, returning back to your book, you outlined the five drivers of business, which are cash, profit, assets, growth, and people. And before we went away to the news, I wanted you to differentiate between asset strength and asset utilization. We hear this term a lot, particularly with the stress tests on the bank. So break it down for us. What's the difference between asset strength and asset utilization? Yeah, when you think of a company's assets, there's kind of two ways that you should examine your effectiveness there. When do you have the asset strength to get through the ups and downs that certainly come in any economy? Asset strength would be uh, the financial wherewithal uh, that you saw some banks and some organizations had four years ago when we started in the Great Recession. You know, J.P. Morgan certainly had more asset strength or financial ability to get through the downturn than, say, a, you know, a Citibank did. Mm-hmm. Uh, the asset utilization, uh, the reason you have assets is to generate a return to the company. So that's simply looking at your assets, and if they're not generating a good return for the company, you ought to get rid of them and put that money into higher returning assets. All right. My guest is Kevin Cope, author of Seeing the Big Picture. So, Kevin, you talk about growth is the fourth driver and people is the fifth. I'm going to skip over to people because in your book you assert that it's critical to anticipate and exceed the wants and the needs of employees. Now, how does a company do that, especially when the employee's satisfaction is really a function of the employee's expectations, not a result of of what the company gives them? Yeah, it's a, it's a great question. And when I, I think of anticipating needs, it's not only the employees, but uh, also the customers they serve. You know, I, Zappos, for me, is a great example of a company who really gets a lot of these right. Uh, you know, a profitable company, although they're, they're now owned by Amazon, but their whole culture around people, part of it is the way they hire their people. So that's part of setting the right expectations as well as meeting or exceeding those. You know, they go through a a rigorous five-week process. Once a person gets through orientation, they're offered $3,000 to leave, if you can believe that. And the idea is anybody who forgoes that $3,000 and stays are really committed and really clear about the culture they're now in. And a lot of their hiring is around not only can you do the job, but you fit culturally in the organization. So I think a lot of getting expectations right starts in the hiring process. My guest is Kevin Cope. Kevin, what did you get out of, uh, what do you want readers to take away from reading your book, Seeing the Big Picture? Well, you know, as I think about it, it's really to get engaged about the business of business. So any employee in a company, to be more interested in how their overall company is performing and doing. People are functionally brilliant, whether it's IT, HR, or sales. They don't always understand how they fit into that big picture. So, number one, I hope they really get that big picture and therefore become more engaged in the business as a result. All right. What did you get out of writing the book, Kevin? Well, um, by the way, we just found out a few minutes before this call that we were uh, number one on USA Today and number four on the New York Times bestsellers list. Congratulations. So, yeah, so I think one of the things that uh, we hope it will raise our profile as an organization, we work with some really great companies out there. But but part of it, um, and the genesis of the book, was really understanding it, where you started at the beginning of the this discussion, Bill, and that is there's a much bigger gap that exists between what people really understand about their businesses and what's really going on in the business. And so as I've gone through this process, it's recognizing and being a little surprised at how big that gap was 
And so we're trying to help organizations bridge that. And your company, Acumen Learning, if people want to learn more about you, learn more about the book, where would you direct them to go on the Internet? AcumenLearning.com. That's A-C-U-M-E-N Learning.com. Kevin, it has been a delight. Kevin Cope is the author of the book. He is Seeing the Big Picture, Business Acumen to Build Your Credibility, Your Career, and Your Company. Thank you so much for being my guest on the Bill Frank Radio Show. We'll talk to you down the road. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.